Now, when you, was was Tupac an original member of Digital Underground? He, was he a featured artist? What? How did he get come a part of it? He, he 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 wasn't he wasn't an original member. Tupac signed separately. As a, well, actually, it was um, the name of the group was Strictly Dope. Okay. They they signed they signed separately, and then you know as as you know, all groups break up. We always say this: they either break up before they get started, they break up in the middle of their run, or they break up when they get super successful. But almost every group is never the same group that it was when they started. Now, I can't think of very many groups that are. Um, you know, there's some, but generally I can't think of very many groups there are. So they broke up before they even got started. It was Ray Love, uh, DJ Diz, and Tupac. Okay. So then then we did, we started doing demos on Tupac, and it was very hard to get a deal at that time for whatever reason. And Digital was getting ready to go on tour, and the short story is that, you know, uh, Shock agreed to take Tupac on tour with him. And then when he did that, you know, Tupac started doing a verse here and there. And then when it was time to do another song, it was just kind of a knack again, you know, just like me in management, him as a as an artist and a rapper is natural for him to be in the in the next song that was going to be a single, which was same song. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was that was that, that movie that that song was in, okay? <laughs> that was the strangest goddamn movie in the world, okay? It, yeah, nothing, nothing but trouble. Yeah, that movie was a nightmare in real. I mean, if you, if you had to live in that situation, them little, two little fat ass, ugly, mission entire looking son of a bitches in diapers. Okay, the doctor, the the judge with the dick nose. Okay, the crazy ass um, elevated that shot you. I mean, the uh, side that shot you downstairs into a dungeon of license plates and bones and shit. Man, that's a nightmare. That's literally a nightmare. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the city that is, is sitting on top of I don't know mines or iron fields or whatever it was, and it just it just was a it, one of the movies I like it, but it's not a movie I watch at nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> I'll movie. tell you, man. That that was my first experience on a major motion picture, and it, it was a great experience. Because they spent, I believe they spent thirty million dollars on that movie back then. Back then, That's, that was a lot of money, and I, I think it. I always looked at it as Warner Brothers' appreciation to Dan Aykroyd. Okay, here, here's some money. Do whatever it is you want. You've made us so much money. Do what you want with it. And all his friends came and were in the movie with him. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, John Candy. Uh sister like that it that uh daughter or something like that um she wasn't mm -hmm. and the, the crazy ass bailiff um but it was just so it was so offbeat it just was it made it for a good yeah. movie but like i said if 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 you if, if, if it was just shy not i can call it i wouldn't call it a horror movie it wasn't a horror movie but it just was some weird shit you know if you ever experienced that in real life that's some shit that'll fuck you up you need I, I, you know, I, I, ne I never thought about that because, you know, obviously I've seen the movie, but, you know, I was also on the set of the movie. So when you're on a set of something, it has a whole different vibe than when you actually see it. So I didn't even look at it. But, you know, a lot of a lot of the shooting was at night. Okay. And, uh, yeah, but it, it was uh, it was it was a crazy time. I mean, guys, you know, uh, Dan, Dan Aykroyd, his character was a city slicker or something coming through town, got pulled over. And mm -hmm. uh, then he became the judge. Oh you know, yeah. Anyway, man, it was a crazy ass movie. I, it was probably on Netflix or Hulu or someplace. Check it out. It's called Nothing But Trouble. And I was, yeah. when, I, when I saw Tupac's part in that movie, we we hadn't spoken in a while at that time. You and I hadn't spoken at t during that time period. I didn't know I didn't know your relationship to Tupac or Digital Underground at that time. I said that dude is pretty good. Okay, that dude is pretty. Mm -hmm. good. That was interesting, especially. Um, was he uh, no? Because because uh, Shock played the keyboard, but played the uh, the organ. Keyboard, yeah. yeah, the organ. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. man, it was a good movie. Um, when you saw him, Tupac taking flight, how how did how did that sit with the rest of the fellas? Oh, they loved it. You know, you know the one thing about di about Digital Underground, they were one big family, and and still are one big family. Okay. Um, so there was no jealousy. There was none of that. It, it was it was all love. 
uh, uh, hope and appreciation for everyone to be successful. Okay. You know, and, and everyone was rolling back then. So, you know, th that was always his, that was always his trajectory was to be a solo artist. It was never really to be part of a group. He ended up being part of a group, but you know, his trajectory was always to be a solo artist. I never heard him diss Digital Underground. I remember him saying it one time, I heard him say one time that uh, when he was a Digital Underground, he would literally dance and he'd do a do a metaphysic dance in his drawers just to have some place to sleep at night. I, I heard him say it on a on a on a, on a uh, interview one time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I appreciate I, I appreciate that and respect that um, by him saying that because sometimes people forget where they come from. You know, yeah. and he he never did. I, that, you know, and I think that's a Gemini trait. Being that I, I got to say this again, being that hot, being that he and I said share the same birthday. You Any, do, you yeah. do. Um, yeah. who are you managing now, man? Are you managing anybody now? Um, well, I, I represent the Johnny Guitar Watson estate. I still, I still manage Digital Underground, and I, and I work on a lot of projects. I'm, I'm more project oriented now, kind, kind of like what you said about, you know, you, you and Layla. And for people who don't know who Layla is, just real quick, she's the person who introduced me to a Tupac. But she also manages her old sweatshirt, and she does a lot of projects and different things also. Um, but I'm much more project oriented. You know, just for that reason, you know, I, I am, I've been in this business for 40 years. So, I'm, you know, unless I have someone else scouting and going to clubs, I don't necessarily want to hang out in clubs anymore. So, you know, it, it takes a lot, it would take a lot for me to manage somebody. Um, but I, you know, I'm the executive producer on Stanley Clark's last two albums. I have my solo piano group project that we're on our, I just finished mastering our fourth album, believe it or not. Okay. Um, I'm, and I'm, I'm moving quick. I mean, we're putting out an album a quarter. We're, you know, we're not really messing around, but you know, it's a different type of thing. So like it's, you know, solo piano and waterfalls this time with an ambient frequency that's, there's certain frequencies that affect your chakras and, your, and their healing frequencies, relaxing frequencies, concentration frequencies. So we're doing we did it we're doing a certain frequency for 432 hertz to be exact in the, in the music to help you relax